الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تعالى وادعوه خوفا وطمعا ان رحمه الله قريب من المحسنين وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لو يعلم المؤمن ما عند الله من العقوبة ما تمع في الجنة أحد ولو يعلم الكافر ما عند الله من رحمته من رحمتي ما قنت من الجنة أحد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم my dear brothers elders i welcome you with the islamic greetings assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh may peace blessings and mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of us my dear brothers we praise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the evils of our own selves and the evils of shaitan it is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who guides and if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to guide none can misguide and it is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who chooses to misguide and if he wills to misguide none can guide and we all bear witness that there is no other deity of worship except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we bear witness that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his last and final messenger and the slave of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my dear brothers everything in this world keeps on changing everything in this world it's bound to change by its nature if you would see a child he is born he is a toddler he grows up into a teenager from a teenager into an adult and then into an old man similarly if you see the weather sometimes it's sunny sometimes it's cloudy sometimes it's rainy so everything in this world by its nature it's bound to change and so are our emotions as well sometimes there are majors when we are happy and sometimes there are things which lead us towards sadness sometimes we are in a state of hope towards allah subhanahu wa taala and sometimes there needs to be an emotion of fear towards allah subhanahu wa taala so my dear brothers everything keeps on changing it is only the zat it is only allah subhanahu wa taala who is hayyul qayyum who has been ever living and he will live thereafter as well we are come here for a very very temporary short period of time and we and anything that is in this world anything that is part of this dunya is bound to perish so when we are bound to perish and there is a concept of after life then there is a manual that has been given to us how we should lead this life because this life is a seed is a sowing stone for the after life so two concepts allah subhanahu wa taala has greatly spoken about in the holy quran and these concepts are sometimes not only misunderstood by non muslims but sometimes they are misunderstood by us muslims as well allah subhanahu wa taala says in the holy quran that invoke him ask allah subhanahu wa taala in the state of fear and aspiration in the state of khauf and rija indeed the mercy of allah subhanahu wa taala is near to the doers of good meaning that these are two wings and iman is the head which will take us towards jannah if we follow the commandments of allah subhanahu wa taala and always the messenger prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but in case we choose to do otherwise then allah subhanahu wa taala has created a punishment so there is a concept of jannah and then there is concept of jahannam there is a concept if we do good we will enter towards jannah so we need to hope we need to have this long lasting for jannah ask jannah and then we need to have fear of jahannam what if my deeds are not acceptable in the sight of allah subhanahu wa taala what if my deeds are not enough in the sight of allah subhanahu wa taala what will happen at that time will i be going into jannah 
or will I be entering into the hellfire? So these two concepts needs to be very very clear. The fear will will make us repent. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will make us ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to forgive us, and the hope is the thing which will instill us to do go more good, to do more of askar, to do more of salah, to do more of charity, to do more of the good deeds. So, my dear brothers, it is important that we realize that there needs to be a balance between fear and hope. There needs to be a balance that we need to strike between these two emotions that are there in ourselves. So, my dear brothers, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned that between these two emotions is iman. Al iman bain al khawfi wa rija. Iman is the one which is in between. Khauf and rija between fear and hope of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And what does Shaitan do? What does our own nafs do with us? They twist our concepts. Before doing a sin, while we should be fearful of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, while we should have the fear of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, we are not having that fear of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala until and unless we commit the sin. And there, when we commit the sin, we do istighfar. The concept of hopes should strike in, but that concept is not let in by Shaitan. So once the the sin has been committed, there needs to be a hope that if I do istighfar, if I repent in front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, if I ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to forgive my sins, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is kind enough, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is merciful enough to forgive my sins. But Shaitan will never let you do that. Shaitan will never let you ask forgiveness from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and he will twist your emotions. Why? Because he wants you to commit that sin again and again and again and never repent and never go back towards the Creator, never go back towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So, my dear brothers, it is important to have the fear before we commit the sin. Before we commit the sin, we need to realize that I have taken a pledge that I will obey Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and Messenger Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Each time the azan goes on, I have to make a pledge. We make a pledge that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is calling us towards the masjid. I need to go towards the masjid to fulfill that promise that I have done with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and His Prophet. But we say it's okay. It's all normal. Everybody is praying at home. Let me pray at home as well. My dear brothers, we have not witnessed that fear and hope of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala wants us to witness. And what is this fear? You know, when you are turning a sharp turn and a traffic and a other car is coming on the side of you, and you are just bound thinking that you will hit that car, but Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala saves you. That moment is the moment of fear. While committing the sin, that moment, that reflection should be there in the mind. The sin is more dangerous than losing a life at that point, because it was it would be one sin that we will fall short of. It would be one sin that we will fall short of, and we will not enter Jannah. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will weigh the amal. He will not be the munsif of Yawm al-Din. No, no. He will be Maliki Yawm al-Din. Meaning that if He wills, He can forgive. If He wills, He can punish even the one sin. On the day of Qiyamah, there is a hadith that a person will be short of one sin, one good deed. And his amal will be weighed up, and Allah, the person will ask to go on to his mother to ask for one good deed. The mother will reply that I am not going to give you, give you the good deed. The mother who sacrificed her nights, who sacrificed her days to bear up the child, to do good for the child. At that moment, even the mother will not help the child on the day of Qiyamah. So there will be a person who will be. Having only one good deed, he will say that I am already going into fire. Let me give you the good deed, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will call both of them, and the person will now have the good deed will enter into Jannah out of the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and the person who has been giving Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will ask him why have you given this good deed? He will reply the same thing that I have given the good deed because I was already going into the fire. So what one good deed will help me? Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will say at that point, "You are trying to be Rahim. You are trying to be merciful. I am more merciful than you. I am Ar Habur Rahimin, and I will forgive you as well." So that is the hope that we need to have. 
But shaitan doesn't let us permit to the hope so that we can gain and we can connect back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will say that why I have to commit the sin again and again? It does not matter. Why would I? I am not going to go for the maghrib. Why should I go for asr prayer? I am not going. Anyways. At that moment, we need to have the fear that what if this is my last salah, that I will pass away with this salah as my last salah. So I need to go to the masjid. Anyhow, any good deed opportunity we cannot lose upon, smaller and smaller deed will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًا يَرَهُ That every deed will be accounted for. So we need to understand. Look at the example of Hazrat Umar ibn Khattab رضي الله عنه. He mentioned that when a person, that if I am informed that everybody is going into Jannah and there is one person that will enter into the hellfire, I will think that that person is me. Look, this is Ashra Mubashira. This is Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, the second caliph of Islam who fought many, many wars, who was the closest companion of Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's saying that if everybody has to enter Jannah and one person is not to enter Jannah, he has this fear in his heart that it will be him who will not enter Jannah. Imagine our amal, our salah, our askar, how much complete they are. And similarly, the hope he had for that if he got to know, he said, if I get to know that everybody is entering into Jahannam and only one person is entering into, uh, into Jannah, I will have this hope that this one person will be me. My dear brothers, if we can just close and make spaces for the people coming in, fill in the gaps, come closer uh, so that other people can fit in as well. So this is something that we need to reflect upon. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has endless mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has endless forgiving nature. But we need to stop ourselves. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran says that do they fear that kul ya ibadi. And many of the mufassirin says that the ya element over here is the most merciful ayah in the Holy Quran. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to the people who are the sinners, who are people, me and, and you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Say, O oh my servants who have transgressed against themselves by sinning, do not despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins. Indeed, He is the one who is forgiving and He is merciful. So my dear brothers, there are three stages of hope. One first stage of hope is in, is is having the hope of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the right actions and the obediences. The hope that will make you rise up from the bed, from the sofa, so from putting away your mobile, to come to the masjid, to come to the people of pious, to come to the gathering of pious, to do charity, that you have this hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept whatever you do. The second degree of hope is a hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive. And you keep on committing wrong actions and disobediences. And this is one of the blameworthy type of hope. And the third degree of hope is very strong which reaches to a degree of considering oneself absolutely safe. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they did, then did they feel secure from the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But no one feels secure from the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except those people who are khasirin, those people who are losers. So yes, just like hope, the fear has three degrees as well. And one of the degree of the first, the first degree of fear is the weakest degree. It does not have any real effect, neither inward nor outward. And this fear might as well not exist because it is of no benefit, no use. The second degree of fear is a stronger degree of fear, which wakes up a person from the heedlessness that he is having. And carries him to being obedient and upright slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it drives him from his neg neglectfulness and makes him go onto the straight path. And the third degree of fearfulness is the severe overpowering fear that reaches to a such a degree that a servant le leaves the hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The slaves leave the hope of his master. My dear brothers, sometimes we think that it needs to be 50% fear, 50% hope. No. There are conditions. There needs to be absolute 100 percent of fear and at times 100 percent of hope 
at the time when we are about to commit a sin, there needs to be hundred percent of fear of Allah subhanahu wa taala that no one can escape the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa taala. We will be accountable for any and every action that we do in this world. And similarly, in the old age, in the time where we are not able to do, where when we are sick, when we are old, when the nafs is not that strong, we need to have the hope of Allah subhanahu wa taala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives people. And it was narrated by Hazrat Anas that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered upon a young man who was dying. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, How do you feel? He said, I have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O Messenger of Allah. But I fear my sins. The Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, These two things, hope and fear, do not coexist in the heart of a person in a situation like this. But Allah will give him that which he hopes for and keeps him safe from which he fears. Meaning that yes, we are Muslims. We believe in Allah and his messenger. One day we will be forgiven inshallah with the hope and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But yet we need to be obedient. We cannot fear or we cannot be, we cannot face the punishment of hellfire even for a single single minute second. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save all of us from the punishment of hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a life of balance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instill the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That fear that stops us from doing any kind of sin, any kind of disobediences. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the hope of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the hope of Hawza Kawsar from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us hope of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us hope of Jannatul Firdaus. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah.